But good morning from beautiful northern Wyoming. Got a little bit of snow. Got probably, oh, six inches maybe. Maybe four, in, four to six inches on the ground. It's a little chilly. It was four degrees Fahrenheit when I left the house. And I'm still short a dog. Um, Astro, my main dog, about a week ago. Actually, exactly a week ago. Uh, cut his leg pretty good on some fence. I assume it's some fence. Could have been a stick, whatever. I didn't see it, but it was out hawking. And had to get it stitched up and quite a few stitches, so I'm giving him some time off to make sure that knit's good before we run him again. There is a, a reasonable chance with the fresh snow, I might be able to find some Huns dug in. It's the only dog I've got, um, Pongo the puppy, who um, it, it's too early in his development to you know run him and find a point and put the bird up over it. He can help find marked birds and stuff, but let's see if we can find some Huns dug in anywhere. If not, I'll just fly pigeons. Kind of what I'm expecting. The visibility is not stupendous. It's a little better now. It kind of comes and goes because it is snowing. It's about oh a half mile right now. Um, as long as it's at least a quarter mile, I'll still fly her. Uh, Co that's my Prairie Falcon Cosmo. She's shown the last few times I've flown her when there was you know light fog or snow, something limiting visibility. She hasn't gone up very well at all, which um, it just shows that she's a little insecure. Doesn't want to lose track of me. It just needs to do it a little bit more to get used to it. And so this would be another um, opportunity for her to experience that and, and get um, around that insecurity. So anyway, with the sage, it's kind of hard to see dug in huns, but we might. We'll give it a look. spotted any dug in huns that's kind of a long shot they're hard to spot with the sage you know it's just the sea of snow they're a little more obvious but also they might not even be out digging in yet because the storm isn't quite complete they're probably still down in the brush the the heavy cover and then um, tomorrow would probably be a really good day to, to look for dug in huns unfortunately I have to work tomorrow and can't fly and then we've got some warm weather coming in tomorrow afternoon. It's supposed to be quite warm, so it'll melt off our snow. But that's okay. Um, Astro will be back to running here pretty soon, and I can uh, you know, just find and get points uh, the way I usually do. Anyway, I'm going to gear up, grab some pigeons, and just fly, some, fly around some pigeons. Go out, of course, just in case there's some hunts or sharp tail here right in the vicinity. Yeah, she's going up a little better today. That's good. Real nice, a little bit wide, but nice. Good boy, find him, find him, find him, find him, find him, find him. Got a little bit of scent. Might be nothing. Give her a pigeon quick. She's losing a little pitch. I'd encourage her to stay up. Still chasing that pigeon, but it's bringing her back right over top of me. 
Off the nose of it. Ah! 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 Woo! Woo! That pigeon is not flying well. It's never seen a falcon before. She'll chase that one far. I want to see if I can get her called off. Help! Woo! Woo! Come on! Woo! Help! Pigeon's flying much better now. She's still chasing it. It'll bring her close enough, she'll break off and come to my lure. Help! Woo! Woo! I can still see her. Can't see the pigeon. Can't tell if she's still chasing or not. I think she is. Come on, kennel. Good boy, kennel. Come on, kennel. Kennel up, come on. Okay. Okay, she's turning. Coming back, maybe. It's over a half mile away. And she's circling 380 feet up. Okay, she's losing altitude. And I think she's coming this direction. Yeah, from over a half mile away. That's sweet. I got a glove on my hands cold. Yep, it's only a quarter mile away now. Coming in hot and fast. Nine hundred feet. Come on. Well, Cosmo flew pretty good. Her pitch was pretty good considering the, the poor conditions. I was happy with that. I would have um, tossed a pigeon for her when she was a little higher and I waited because Pongo started getting birdie and I was holding out hope that there might be some huns or something there. There may have been, you know, way farther up or something like that, but I didn't want to push it too long because her patients are still pretty short. So, um, but just with more uh, experience and practice, she'll have more patience waiting on and stay up longer and go higher. And so all in all, it was really good lessons. First pigeon, she chased hard, took her out far, and the pigeon was nice and cooperative and brought her right back overhead. So that's why I tossed out the second pigeon. And I tossed it on the ground in the snow so it like struggled to get going to make it more encouraging, uh, more um, 
uh, falcons will chase a pigeon that they think is hampered uh, more readily, more aggressively. And I knew I had to make that one real attractive to get her to break off the one she was chasing, and it worked. She stooped it. That was a pigeon that had never um, seen falcons before. You know, after they survive being tossed under a falcon a few times, they get to be a lot better at it and a lot more confident. So the first time is always a little bit sketchy. And um, by the way, a quick tip for today with your pigeons, I've got one left here, is um, a lot of falconers don't band their pigeons. And, and I found it very helpful. I use a year band and I just use National Pigeon Association, it doesn't really matter what. Um, the main thing I want on it is the year and then they have different colors for every year. This one here, um, let's see, this is uh, 19. So this is, this pigeon's going on uh, five years old. And um, I also put other bands on them. We put these spiral bands, but you can use anything you want. This is our method, uh, Dave and I's method, we share a pigeon loft, of keeping track of which pigeons have been used under falcons and which ones are good or not. So we've got these spiral bands in different colors we use for indicating different things. Some of them, like this pigeon with the white, is pretty distinctive. But um, a lot of you just blue bars and stuff like that, um, that they all look alike and I can't tell them apart. So unless you have some kind of marking on them, you know, you're not gonna be able to know which one's which and it's good to know which is which. And so you can keep track, so you know which ones are the good ones. Anyway, I've got one left here, so I'll um, save that one. I'll go up here and plant it somewhere for Pongo, let him run a little bit more. And um, I guess that's it for today. I gotta work tomorrow and I'll be back at it the next day. I'll, I'll look at Astro's uh, stitches and that's it's knitting and healing real well where he cut himself and um, I think he might be ready to start going again on a limited basis on the next day, but we'll see Anyway, as always, thank you for watching It's a pair of huns he was pointing. Come on, Kel.